What is the process for building an app? And how should you plan your time and activities as a software entrepreneur? Hello and welcome. My name is Dale Richards, CEO of App Creative, an app development company on the Silicon Slopes of Utah. We're on a mission to build apps to change the world. If you want to build apps, grow your SaaS business, and make money doing cool software entrepreneur related stuff, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell. As a small business owner, you may be thinking about building an app to reach a bigger audience or to add more value. But if you've never built an app before, you may not know what to expect. So here's a rough overview of the different stages you'll go through when building your app. Number one, concept validation and research. Concept validation is possibly the most important step in building your app. The goal of concept validation is to make sure that your app is the app the market needs. It's really important to be honest with yourself and detach yourself emotionally from the app concept. You need to be committed to building the app that the market needs, not the app that you think the market needs. Not every app idea is a good idea. Why? because many ideas do not solve a true problem for the target audience. You want to make sure that you're going to build the right app for the right person. And the first step is to identify and reach out to your target user. Then find out if they perceive the problem you're trying to solve as a real problem that's worth solving, and more importantly, worth paying for. You want to try to understand what is going on in their head. How are they currently solving the problem? How much do they currently spend to solve that problem? How often do they encounter that problem? And one point of emphasis as you talk with these people is to keep the conversation about reality, what has actually happened. Don't use hypothetical scenarios. Otherwise, it can mess up the information you receive and the people will give you what we call false positives to protect your feelings. One tool that's extremely useful is the Value Proposition Canvas by Strategizer. This helps to capture your assumptions and then validate or invalidate them as you talk to your target user. As you go through this exercise, you're going to need to map out and be aware of the, the pains, the gains, and the jobs of the target user. The goal is to be able to describe the target user and the role of your app in their life and how it will help them overcome their struggles. So for more information, read Preparing to Develop Your App. We'll put a link in the description below. The next stage is Features and Requirements. Now that you have confirmed that your app really is a good idea, uh, one that solves the pains of the target audience, you're going to need to figure out the features and requirements for your app. So you'll want to begin mapping out features that will be the most valuable to the users. You can start this process by going over the customer jobs from the value proposition canvas. Take their jobs and write them out step by step. What they would do on your app if it were in front of them to solve their problems. So in effect, You'll want to turn their customer jobs into what we call epics. An epic is a collection of individual steps or user stories that describe what the user needs to do in your app. After writing out the epics, break them down into user stories by writing out the simple statements of clicking here, typing there, opening this, saying that. To learn more, check out this article on user story writing. By writing out user stories, you're going to explore various requirements that maybe you missed before. Maybe they were hidden and you didn't see them or didn't notice them. For example, you're a translator working on a new platform to translate a document from English into French. You finish your work and then submit it to an admin. Well, what happens if the admin rejects my work or has feedback? What happens in the negative scenarios? So going through use cases like that will help bring out new system requirements. The next stage is design. Once the user stories have been mapped out, you can then hand them off to a designer, a UX designer. When you do that, also make sure that you share any brand guidance with the UX designer to help them interpret your brand into the UX design. You're going to want to share logos, typefaces, colors, emotions, anything to help the user feel like they are immersing themselves in your brand, your company. At that point, the designer should review all the user stories so they can understand how the app and the features work. During this process, they may point out some user stories that should be included or some maybe that have been missed. Next, the UX designer will build a feature library that shows how the buttons, fields, texts, drop downs, and other interactive elements will look in the app. Depending upon the designer, they may also build what we call wireframes, which are empty layouts of screens without color. Now, this is not something that's absolutely required. You could get by without wireframes, but it is a, a great advantage to have because it'll help you explore functionality quickly without spending time on brand interpretation, full color, pixel perfect mockups. 
By the end, the UX designer will provide you with a set of high fidelity, full color mockups that the development team can use and interpret. There are several online platforms that you can use to design your mockups. We like to use Figma, it just happens to be our product of choice, but you can also use other platforms like Adobe XD uh, or InVision. Before you move on, you need to consider one more aspect of design, the technical design. Have your lead developer or architect look over the stories and mockups. Have them draw an architecture diagram that shows which technology components will be needed to bring this app to life, as well as how those components will interact with each other. It's like creating a game plan. It'll help the developers as they build the app so that they know what needs to be done and where. After design, we have development and testing. Now that you have your user stories, your mockups, and your architecture, you are ready to have developers start coding. Communicate with your developers daily. In this stage, communication will be one of the most important aspects. Good communication will save you from a lot of stress down the road. To help with this, we recommend that you manage your work in a system like Jira or Trello. In these platforms, you'll be able to establish a simple workflow or process for building out each user story. When we work to build an app, our flow is design, backend development, frontend development, integration, QA or testing, and also UAT, which means user acceptance testing. Your flow doesn't have to match ours. This is just what we have seen work for us. But what it is important is that you have a flow that works for you. As the developers begin to build your app, have them commit their work daily. The reason behind this is so that you can check their work or that they can check each other's work. The sooner you'll be able to discover problems as they arise, the sooner you can fix them. Do not let your developers sit on code for days or weeks at a time. In many software teams today, developers start coding at the beginning of their day, and then they commit their work at the end of the day. Commit daily. One last bit in this section is that you're gonna want a good software tester. Yes, you can do some of the testing and the spot checking yourself, but get someone who is experienced. This is not something that you want to just try and save money on. A good tester will greatly improve the quality of your app. Think of it as an investment into your own app. So you can read more about different forms of software testing here. Next, we have the launch. Finally, we get to launch the app. But launching means more than just deploying your app. Launching your app includes, yes, all of your technical deployment tasks, but it also includes preparing your user base to start using your app, which really you need to be doing in advance, as well as prepping your App Store listing so that you can distribute your app to Apple and Android users through the App Store. Again, that's something you should do in advance. To learn more, read Understanding the App Development Timeline. Basically, launching means everything it takes to bring your app and the users together. With all of these pre-launch activities, Communication and planning are really important. If you forget to prepare, you might have to delay your launch up to a month or maybe even more. So consider things like when and how you will communicate with your testers about what. Will you send a pre-launch email campaign to announce your beta test start date? One thing that's been helpful for us is using a pre-launch checklist that helps us organize all of the necessary information so that we are prepared. One pre-launch activity that is crucial for your success is setting up support for your app. You need to have this in place before you can operate. You'll need a place where users can report problems and get help. The next stage is operations. After your launch, you begin operations. That means you start running your app. The main goal here is to maintain and improve your app and the servers it runs on. With app support, users need to be able to reach you through phone, email, chat, or instant messaging. In addition to reporting problems, users may also suggest new features. That's feedback that you want. With each report, you can then turn to the developers so that they can find a solution and then get ready to release a new update. The more you work with building and running apps, the more you realize that it is not so much an event as it is an ongoing process. The app will grow with the company and become an essential part of business operations. It will be vital to how you reach out and connect to your target market. There are so many possibilities for you and your company as you begin to explore how you will create value through apps. So get going. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you here next time on App Creative.